You may or may not know the name Greg Phillips from the movie 2000 Mules, but after today's show, you'll know a lot about him. Stick around. We talk about his growing up in Alabama and things that are on the horizon for his um, work with Catherine Engelbrecht and True the Vote. And he's also in town this weekend for an event. There'll be a showing of 2000 Mules at the Pelham Civic Center. And you can buy tickets at justfreedomnetwork.com. But we've got a great show for you. We go through a lot, so stick around. And I promise you it'll be things you've not read anywhere. Welcome into this week's edition of Alabama Unfiltered, your favorite podcast out there across the state of Alabama and soon to be across the entire United States. I'm Scott Beeson. Allison Sinclair is with me. Amy Beth Shaver as well. And this week on the program, we have Greg Phillips from the OPSEC group. You've seen his name around, may not know a lot about him, but let's get started. Greg, welcome to the program. Ladies, how are y'all? We're good. We're good. How are you? Glad to be here. Thank you. Are you really? Happy. Because pre-recording. Let's do this. It might be a little dicey. I'm pretty sure he was recording it. It'll be all (laughs) wasted. It's going to be the gag reels at the (laughs) end. I have no doubt that that everything we just said will come back. Probably. Including the slaps and everything. That's okay. The NSA is already watching and recording anyway. Get your hands on the table. That's right. At At all all times times. where everyone can see them. Okay. Really, everyone. (laughs) (laughs) I said we were going to be professional. We're going to. I know. This is great, though. So it's interesting because, like you said, people may not know your name. But I would say a bunch more people do in 2022 than they did before. Um, And Alabama will be kind of impressed to know your history here. So can we go back to like baby Greg Phillips and growing up and kind of your young life? And I know you went to the University of Alabama. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. tide. It's painful. Sorry. War Eagle. Go Vols. I'm like one. I don't know which one. One of my youngest son escaped and went to Auburn and. It just still hasn't. Really? Yeah. The whole family's been, been broken. Makes me feel because better. Of, wow. Okay. Well, tell us about your boys and where, uh, what part of Alabama are you from? So I grew up, uh, um, my dad was in the service when I was really young. Okay. Um, ended up in Tuscaloosa after he, he came back from Vietnam, ended up in Tuscaloosa, going back to school there. Um, and um, grew up in Montgomery or, or just outside of Montgomery and um, went to Sydney Lanier High School. Hmm. And went to the university. And uh, so almost as soon as I graduated, I escaped and decided that uh, I was going west and went out and spent uh, a few years out in California before coming back to Birmingham and been, been all around the world since. I thought you were going to say you escaped west to Mississippi because you did end up in Mississippi <laughs> yeah, for a while. I did. That's I did. kind of. I, uh, I worked for the uh, Alabama Republican Party for a little while. Um, I did uh, a guy running for. Uh, Governor of Mississippi, a guy named Kirk Fordyce, ran mm-hmm. went over there and, and worked in that campaign. Uh, stayed in his cabinet and was his um, his. Uh, what well, he used to introduce me in, in speeches as his box guy. And people would be like, "What are you talking about, man?" He said, "He's the one who." Can I say bad words here? You guys have to believe that. Can. Yeah, let's not. Uh, <laughs> but he would say that he would say it's like rhymes with. Oh, let's just. I'll just say crap. Okay. Right. Oh yeah. Okay. So, so he he would say. He goes into their offices, gives them a box, tell them to get their crap and get out. That's, oh, how, he okay. would, that's how he would enter. He was a firing so guy. I was his box guy. Okay. okay. For some reason, I had you down as the head of Department of Health. I did that for a while. Okay. But I was in his cabinet, went from department to department, kind of doing things and and firing a bunch of folks and um, and then going out and hiring my replacement and moving on to another one. So, so that's was what I did. California, okay, co- graduated from Alabama. Alabama. What's your degree in? Uh, finance. Okay. And then went to California? I did. Okay. Worked in uh uh worked for uh, Safeway stores, the largest grocery store. Oh, no seen way. In the world. Yeah, I love Is Safeway. It? My dad lives in Lake Tahoe and oh, yeah. um Absolutely. I love Safeway. Yeah. Okay. America's, anyway, America's, America's favorite food store. I really do. They're like yeah. Safeway must be really good. What do you say? Really America's favorite That's what they used to call it, America's favorite food store. I it's probably I is. Know, if he says so really it probably good. Is. Yeah. We can be assured. But okay, so then in then, their corporate office, I wasn't like like, you know, like putting tomatoes and things out. You know, what's interesting is I went, I left college and went to work for Chick-fil-A, but in their corporate office. But like, even my mom thought that I worked in a restaurant. Like nice. she would tell people I made the fries. Did you? I'm like, no, <laughs> but we ever- actually, we did have to go work in the store a few times a year nice. and work the drive through. Did you yeah. get free food? 
Yes. And did you get free yes. food, sir? I mean, did you no, at least get some groceries? Free. I didn't yeah. get anything free. Wow. When you were in California, was that no the bread? heydays of California? Man, or that was, was already in, on the... That was in 1983. So that was still E.T., neighborhoods, yeah. ride the bicycle everywhere. That was but we, before we, they just I would take, ran um, in the ground. I would take, uh, lived out west or east of town, and, and we'd take the train in or drive in. And, and um, man, it was, it, was a, it was a wild place. Did you say what yeah. town it was? Uh, it was right next to Walnut Creek, which is where their 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 uh, I like Walnut Creek. their uh, uh, supply headquarters way. at the time. It's now that their yeah. coal headquarters, but oh wow! But uh, but it used to be just where the supply division was. But there was a little town next to it, a Pleasant Hill. So okay. that's where that's where it was. So then you got wooed back to Mississippi to I be did. the box man. Nope, uh, came back to Alabama, lived here for for five or six years, okay. worked for the party, did a few political things. Mm -hmm. Um, did a little bit of, of uh, oppo work, opposition research work. Um, got involved in a couple of projects in some um, foreign countries and did those and fiddled around here for a while and went to Mississippi in 91. Okay. Um, escaped Mississippi in 91 and went to Georgia, lived in Georgia for a while. Um, ended up in Texas working for Governor Perry. Pretty much the same thing yeah. I was doing in Mississippi except in Texas. Texas Did he call you the box man too? <laughs> no, he didn't. He might. I mean, I don't know what he. <laughs> I, I you don't know, don't know what he calls. I, you. I don't, I'm not sure what he calls me these days. But, but, um, but the the task was a little different. Texas is is massive, right? I mean, when I, I was running the biggest department in Mississippi, and I had seven or eight thousand people in Texas, we had sixty five thousand people. Oh and an $80 billion budget. And so my job was to take 13 separate agencies, put them into one, and uh, be sure that uh, the size of the overall staff was reduced by about 20,000 people. So, so 20, 25,000 people later, you get a lot of scars on your back. You Some fired a have. lot of people. Yeah, that's why people love me so much. <laughs> Did it why ever like why you get had to move to from heart? state to state to state to state? Too. <laughs> or did it just become like? No, I think my friends would tell you that that uh, there is no heart. <laughs> <laughs> didn't bother it. Yeah, didn't bother him at all. Don't don't worry too much about that. There is no so heart. how did you get into? How did you go from healthcare box man to election voter data? Well, I still own a healthcare tech company. Uh, Catherine Engelbrecht, the head of True, Levo True the Vote, and I own a healthcare technology company along with my young, my oldest son, and uh, we still do that. Uh, but we, the rest of it, all the political stuff and all of the the um, work that we do in 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 gathering intelligence and 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 sort of fusing it into into our work, um, really has been around in one way or another in my life since the '80s. Since I started doing, I've never really gotten out of it. Occasionally, I'll go off and do a project here or a project there. Um, and um, w when when Catherine and I met back in uh, 2013, um, uh, a couple of years I helped on a project she was working on with True the Vote. And then um, a couple of years later, um, she joined the the healthcare team, and and I started working with her a little bit. I think I was on her board for a few years from like 2014 to 2016 or 17, I think. Um, and, uh, you know, all along the way we were still doing all our healthcare stuff. And, and by the way, we have a great team on the healthcare side. So it's not like, it's yeah. not like Greg and Catherine actually running this thing on a day over day basis. She does. I don't. So that's like right. your real jobs. Yeah. I have a, let's just say that I have a real job. Right. So what does that mean when it, you say healthcare tech company? Um, we started off in uh, healthcare fraud detection. So we'd gather a little oh, bit of data. There we uh, go. We'd go out and buy, a, a fuse in a bunch of outside data. We'd buy from data brokers four or 500 pieces of information about people and then really kind of mash it around, try to figure out the identity, residency, citizenship of any one individual. And then um, uh, that kind of morphed into a, a means or a mechanism to score people. So as people come into a healthcare system, we would give them a score. Um, once I escaped, uh, from my job in Texas, uh, we turned that into a company. And so, um, and so we'd still do that to this day. We score people in the healthcare system. I think we've done 43 million scores or something oh. like that. You've said escaped a lot. I know it's, it's part of my life. Is that <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of, kind of, if she slaps me, I'm going to leave. <laughs> I, I'll escape this room. I, I noticed the door might be locked. Though, you know? No. Okay. And there's another door that I locked past it too. Ooh. All right, uh, we got a problem. <laughs> so we may from healthcare, and then you started something called because you're very difficult to gather information on. 
which I don't know if that's purposeful or not. Of course it is. It's there's, mm -hmm. there's a lot and there's no more LinkedIn page, right? Well, they gave it back to me, right? But they killed everything. So this is the second or third time this has happened. So yeah. it doesn't matter how many thousands of people that I get that, that I follow or they yeah. follow me. Um, LinkedIn will just kill it. Okay. And so, well, that I makes think it's back though. It's the reason you. I mentioned that. You know, well, last night it wasn't. Oh, it was back. Or, yeah, no, it was. They just kill it because of who you are or what you work on, or this time they killed it because of mules. They killed it the day, okay, the, because the day of the, the movie. movie the day the movie came out, they killed it. Um, Mississippi State uh, killed my lease in my data center uh, on on the campus in Starkville um, on the same day. So there was a lot of a lot of killing and gnashing of teeth going on when we when we came out. Hmm. Do a little talking with each other, huh? Some of them seems the like it. The I, th I think Mississippi the State. Side. I think Mississippi State killed it because there there was some confusion about. They have a research center over there, and inside of that research center, there's like I don't even know how many buildings, eight or nine buildings, maybe in the research center. One of the main buildings holds held, holds um, I think eight or nine like supercomputers. Okay, and then the um, uh, and then uh, C Spire has a data center in there. Uh, in Spark, uh, which is one of their um, um, affiliates uh, has a data center in there. And so, and we were in one of the, the buildings, the adjacent buildings. And um, the AP got wind of that and wrote and asked a whole bunch of uh, questions. And remember now this is a, this is a state where I also fired a bunch of people. And right. I think there's still a lot of raw feelings around. And, right. and um, so, you know what, they didn't like it and uh, just terminated the lease, sent me a thing saying, Saying, what did they say? They said uh, they needed it for somebody else, and that we weren't using it appropriately, or we weren't using it enough, or something. Which begged, you know, the question from us was: my, all of my guys were like, "Well, how do you know what we were using it for? Mm. Right? How do you how do you know what we were doing in there? Right, right. Because mm. yeah. they're always watching. If you're not using thing. it appropriately, how, what, how what do you know it wasn't appropriate? Right. What the reality was, so I'll tell you a secret. What the reality was is um, part of of what we do is to ensure that there's enough misinformation either about me or us or what we do out there so that when the haters come to hate, they hating on something that may or may not even be real. So while we did store cold store, a lot of data in there, there wasn't anything alive in that building, in that, in that office. <laughs> right. But they didn't know that. Right? Wait, are you right. serious? Yeah. hundred percent. That's so exciting. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we, so we, that is tricked them, awesome. Maybe, right. But they're, they're such haters though, right? They'll dive right in. Like, like he said that he said that they were processing data in the supercomputer. And that's not exactly what I said, but either, either way, even if I did say that, so what? It's not your business. It's mine. Right. Hmm. Right. So, wow. so to get people up to speed, um, cause they're still trying to figure out who Greg Phillips is. I think they know my beard better than right. me. Right. Right. Yeah. If they're on true, you're, you're if they're on true levels, social, yes, right. as you if they're on true Allison. social, they know my beard way better than they know me. No, it's, it's the, the, the ball cap, no beard, Greg Phillips. Just, I wouldn't even. Yeah. I mean, it's, you've got places you to the go. Street. If right. they finally figure out what you were doing at Mississippi <laughs> yeah. state. Right. Well, you know? what I'm going to do, I'll just tell you what, what I'm going to do when all this is over and I'm done, I'm going to go open me up probably next to uh, John McGinnis's uh, place down at the beach. I'm going to sell T-shirts. I'm going to sell beer. <laughs> and occasionally when my friends come by, I'm going to smoke a cigar with them. That's going to be my job. Okay. We'll come hang out there. That sounds yeah. way more yeah. fun than we'll like. Yeah. An interview there. I mean, we yeah, all, all can absolutely. Do that? that would be good. Being yeah. on some terrace watch list, hanging out with you now. Nice. <laughs> so real quickly, because I want to get to, I want to talk about the debacle that was Alabama a little bit and this district 27 Senate race, which you were very vocal about, but one of the things that most people probably don't know is that you were recently diagnosed with cancer and, but it's kind of, can I say it? It's a great story. It, it's it, an amazing it's, story. I don't know if it's amazing or not. I mean, so uh, almost exactly three years ago I was diagnosed um, and, and it, I didn't take like a traditional path. So just full disclosure here. Um, I decided, um, you know, I need to spend a little bit of time getting in touch with God. That was my, mm -hmm. that was my calling. It wasn't to go, you know, jump in a radiation machine or yeah. anything else. So, um, so with the help of Catherine and, and some of my friends and family, uh, I just packed up, packed a backpack and went and walked 500 miles on the Camino de Santiago in Spain. Uh, partway across it, I had all, <laughs> I had all manner of stuff going on. I just lots of, uh, but lots of communion with God and, and, um, 
and uh, talking with God. I learned how to listen while I was over there. Um, I've got some great stories about different things that happened to me along the way. By the time I got back, I was super sick. Um, I had uh, my. How long did it take you? Um, you it takes most people, I think, like 35 days. I tried to okay. pack it in and did it in like 28 days or something like that. Hmm. But not again, not not super smart. Um, but by the time I got back, I had uh, I had an infection in my kidneys and just all kinds of things going on. So it wasn't it wasn't the brightest decision I ever made. But right after that, I came back and went through the whole sort of standard stuff, went through drugs and radiation and surgery and the whole thing and couldn't quite kick it, couldn't quite get rid of it. And um, a, a friend of mine, a surgeon friend of mine uh, said, look, I can't prescribe this to you, uh, but you need to look into this. And she gave me a box of this, uh, this dog dewormer. Fenbendazole is the, um, is the uh, primary ingredient for it. Um, and, and uh, so basically, basically a cycle on, a few days on, a few days off. I kind of did a little research and found out, okay, I probably should be um, eating a bunch of vitamin C, maybe some zinc. And I just kind of did my own thing. But, I mean, people have asked me repeatedly, what was, what was the protocol you used? I didn't have a protocol. I just, like, looked at the back of the box and what they did with the dogs, I did, my, <laughs> I did myself. This is <laughs> like ivermectin and horse paste. Yeah, it kind of is in a way. But but Finbendazole is 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 amongst people sort of in – there's a whole community of things. You can do a search on Finbendazole and cancer online. And, I mean, there's people that, I mean, are legit studying this thing. And, and, you know, but for me, I did it. And, um, th a few months later, three months later or so I go into my doctor's office and they do this thing in teams. So you walk into your doctor's mm -hmm. office, normally it's just one of the five people on your team or three right. people or whatever you got. And I walk in and, and all five of them were in the room at the same time. And I'm like, okay, this is bad. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah. This is, yeah. yeah, yeah this, pick out okay. Yeah. Stuff. I didn't even sit down. I just said, all right, just whatever it is, just tell me what it is. When do we start? You know, mm. I'll, I'll do whatever, you know, I just pretty much resolve, you know, this is it. And, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to do whatever it takes to be done with this. And, um, and, uh, my, my primary doctor stood up, said, said, you know, we've not encountered anything just like this, but you know, you have no evidence of disease, which is, you know, you want to hear that instead of in remission or any of these other mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what? what? I mean, I didn't even know what to say. I think I was just like stood there for a while. Mm -hmm. And I, I think I said something stupid, like, well, what do I do? <laughs> and, he's, and, he, and he's like, well, what do you mean? What do you do? And I'm like, whatever. So, so the, the biggest things for me, the biggest takeaways is uh, um, that I always tell folks is, you know, just be be open, right? Be open. You know, pray a lot. I prayed every single day. I've got I'm on the Bible app, and I've prayed every day since the day I was diagnosed, and and uh, it keeps up with my my days and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I've done that. The thing I learned most while I was in Spain was to listen. I'm not okay. I'm not a super good listener, hmm. and uh, and uh, when you choose not to listen to to God when He's telling you what to do, I mean that can cause problems. So. So um, praying, listening for the answer or, or whatever it is that you might get back is super important. Um, and, then, and then just, uh, you know, just keeping at it. I, I think, I mean, my people probably tell you differently, but, but uh, I don't think I took off a day of work. I mean, I tried to work through it all. I, I don't think I was very successful sometimes, but even while I was in Spain, I'd walk, I'd walk for 15, 20 miles a day and, and then... Uh, and then I'd get on and do my conference calls because they'd be getting to the work about the time I was done. Mm -hmm. And um, so I just tried to keep sort of a normal life. But but um, in the midst of all of that, um, so that was in 2019 and into 2020. Um, and in August of 2020 is when, when, when the doc said that we launched the hotline that ended up being the, the, the um, genesis for the movie. And what we learned mm -hmm. out of the out of, out of that hotline about a week or so later. Wow! And um, and you know, and here I am. So I'm super happy to be here. And and uh, you know, I, I I mentioned this story online here fairly recently, and and it ignited just an incredible outpouring of people. Just you know, first of all, praying for me and and thanking me, which is you know still a little hard mm -hmm. for me to follow, but or swallow, but the the number of people that were reaching out about this this treatment protocol and or whatever for me it was just like read the box I mean right, I know, right. You might want to talk to somebody a lot more a lot more uh, uh, read up on this than I am but there's an amazing number of people that are stepping up that know a lot about this right. saying do this do that follow this and follow right. that wow. 
and um, all sorts of people that that are you know kind of in their you know have have uh, friends, family, and relatives, and a few of themselves that are you know in the you know final stages, stage four, and just looking for something to do. Yeah. Back years ago, I was involved in some of these right to try bills um, in Mississippi, in particular, um, but. You know, the government just doesn't want you to really do this, right? Mm-hmm. Trump passed a federal bill called Right to Try. I think Mississippi probably has the best one. Um, but um, it, it's, um, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a humbling experience in a way, you know, for me to, to have, believe me, I mean, I, I, was, I don't ever think I was close to dying, but it was humbling in a way to know that, that, you know, my path took me to a place where I had to learn to listen. And I came back sick and I kind of forced my way through all of that. But had I not done that because I don't listen to people, mm-hmm. or very often I do now, listen to you. <laughs> uh, uh, Slap him. <laughs> uh, not yet. Um, I think that the the lesson that I learned is really what saved me and mm-hmm. and and the prayerful, the prayerful just days and, and hours and weeks and months and all these things uh, really added up. So when it came time to, you know, somebody that I know very well, but, you know, I didn't expect to hand me some off-brand something and say, Dog hey, dewormer. here, here mm-hmm. try this. And for you to right. listen yeah. and say, right. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You know, and, and that was the first thing when it popped in my head was, you need to listen. This, you know, this didn't come. There are no coincidences, and this is not one. Wow. Right, mm. and take this, and and so I did, and and um, yeah, and and here I am. I mean, it's a it's a it's a humbling experience to have been through it. Uh, not that again, not that I was ever really like I'm death's bed or anything. People a lot worse, much 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 worse off than I ever was. But to know that there's um, treatments out there, you know, mm-hmm. possibilities for 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 people to get well but the government's you know hiding Mm -hmm. them and and big farm is hiding them and Mm -hmm. you know we've all experienced all of the stuff that went on with the pandemic and all the vaccines and all of that and it just it just makes you wonder i mean just what what really is out there that we don't know anything about Mm -hmm. and right and what's the what is this all about so Anyway, what's, but, what's been developed is just sitting on a shelf somewhere because this treatment is much more profitable than this one and I, i have a friend of mine who's a doctor who swears to me he was involved in a small company and they had this great product and it was bought and never came to market wow shelved Mm -hmm. Mm, we got we got involved in this thing um back in 2010 um i went to haiti after the earthquake uh one of the Mm -hmm. other things that i've done in my career is is uh do like first response disaster stuff so things go wrong and people like me would show up on the scene um and um uh through a quirk of circumstance, um, we had, we ended up with the only operating X-ray machine in Haiti. Wow! Um, and it was a, kind of one of those small, about nine hundred pounds, rolls on wheels, and has a big arm that sticks up. Um, but but because there were so many kids hurt, little little ones hurt. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you can't just say, "Hey, Scott, you know, don't move. I'm about to take this X-ray." Right. Right. Um, to a little one, I mean, what's a, what's a baby going to do? You know, they're going right. to be run, right. moving all around. So, so the deal was, you had to kind of hold the kid in such a way that that the um, that the the arm of the machine was kind of here, and so holding the baby or holding the kid. Mm-hmm. Uh, we took thirty three thousand X rays without, you know, had it been three hundred or whatever, but we didn't have any lead vests. We didn't have anything like that. But. Oh my god. Anyway, so I got radiation poisoning out of it, and it ended up killing my jawbone, um, and my sight in my right eye um, kind of kind of faded because of um, it killed the uh, collagen in my eye, mm-hmm. and so all kind of all manner of stuff happened. But you know, speaking of speaking of God's word in, in my life, as if as if this wasn't enough to teach me to pay attention and listen. Um, I mean, I was I was at uh, actually Catherine and I had just met, I think, and. And we were at at a at a lunch or something in in Austin, Texas, and and I'm like, what's happening here? And it's like my my jaw. I mean, I couldn't move my jaw. My teeth were like loose, and it was just right. like, what what's happening? And uh, so we go up to my I, I lived there at the time, and and so so I I left the lunch and went to my went to my um, uh, dentist. I said, can you take some X-rays? Something's going on. She's sure. So she she's like. 
dude, I've never seen anything like this before. Oh, goodness. So what had happened was the, uh, the, the, the radiation had killed my jawbone. Right. And, and it begun because there was an infect because of the, there was an infection that was related to it that, um, um, basically was causing the bone to, to, to sort of go away, to disintegrate. Like just, mm -hmm. And your teeth were falling out. Yeah. And I'm oh. like, what? is happening to me. So this would have been in 2014, I think. And, um, and so she hooked me up with a, um, a guy in Austin and he's like, look, I, I can't help you with this, but there's a doctor down, in, wow. down at the university of Miami named Marks who, who has a lot of experience in this and this type of thing. We still didn't know exactly what it was. I mean, I knew I had been sick from the radiation, right. but I didn't know about this. Um, and, um, you know, I just skipped a whole chapter. I had to go to Ireland to get them to operate on my eye because they don't do it. The whole point of this was they don't do the surgery that would have saved my sight in my eye here. Really? They in America? In America. So I had to go to Ireland and get and get my... Oh, my and I've goodness. Got some, we don't have time for those stories, but I have some hilarious stories about traveling around <laughs> Ireland blind. Right. <laughs> I bet you fit right in. I mean... <laughs> It was ridiculous. So, wow. so, so one of them was, so I was, at, so I was at this, uh, um, we'll never get to the bottom of this. Y'all going to be on here forever. <laughs> He's going to cut us off in a minute. Um, so I end up in, uh, um, Kilkenny, Ireland oh. at a, um, at a music festival Been there. and have you? Yes. And so I was in, in Kilkenny, Ireland at this music festival and I can't see. Right. So I'm like, and I'm just kind of, I can see a little bit. Like I can see right. people in front of me. So everybody's getting off the train. I'm like, I'm going to follow that guy. Right. That blue shirt. Right. And so I'm like, I'm like right behind this dude, following him all the way up to the thing. And, uh, and I had no plan beyond just Are that. Are you by yourself? Oh yeah. The whole, the whole time. Oh, wow. You're blind by yourself. Bl blind by myself in Ireland. <laughs> and, uh, and so I, I finally make my way to this thing and I'm sitting there and I'm, you know, that band's playing. And uh, Alabama Shakes was there, and they came no out. No way! I swear to God, it's true. <laughs> I love wow. This was in twenty. Her. This was in twenty. Uh, 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 twenty twelve, I think. April or March okay. of twenty, or April May of twenty twelve. I can't remember Just exactly. Just in there. Drummers. And um, and this. So this whole thing's like completely surreal to me. Right. I'm like. Weird. You know, people are befriending me. There's this poor, old, this poor, old <laughs> poor blind, blind guy. Yeah. So they know you're blind. I have no idea. That's, I don't know. Maybe that was in my brain. I mean, people I think you know, eyes. people who talk to you and you're blind. Like, what do you do? Like, what do you look at? Do you, are your eyes? Yeah. Oh yeah. I was do, I was doing that for sure. So they must have known something was oh, wrong. Okay. But goodness. this one couple, this one old couple, befriended That's me. Funny. It's really not. This one old couple befriended me, and and you know, like ten or twelve beers later, they're like, you know what you should do. The next train stop down is this little place called Thomaston. And outside of Thomaston, there's this old abbey that is supposed to have healing powers. Oh, and sweet. And I'm like, okay, I'll do that. So I go somehow make my way back to the train, get on the train, go to Thomaston, get off. Never occurred to me for a moment that Thomas, the, the train station in Thomaston is about as big as this table. And I get off. I'm like, okay. So now it's probably four or five o'clock in the afternoon. And um, I didn't know if the sun was going down or not. I wasn't quite that in tune, but, but I, I, I kind of make my way out to the street and there's this, this old guy on a bike and, I, and he's like, you know, I guess he felt sorry for him. He's like, can you, can I help you? <laughs> I'm like, well, um, I hear there's this old Abbey and he goes, oh yeah, just go down here and take a left and do it right. And I'm like, like you're like, I'm blind. <laughs> I did. I said, dude, I can't see. <laughs> he's, that's, I said, that's why I'm going. So by the time I, and he, he, dude was great. And he, he kind of helped me along and helped my way, helped me get down there. I picture you him I in finally, his basket, like on the front of his bike. Like, yeah. like Toto. Like, yes. <laughs> like to Toto and the Wizard of Oz. And uh, so I finally get down to this old abbey and it's like legit a ruin. This thing was like built in like, you know, year 1100 or something. Yeah. And there's not much left there. And, uh, by the time I get there, it freaking starts to rain. But what's true? What's true also about Ireland is is that every time I've been to Ireland, and I spent in, I spent six weeks there at that point, but I've spent more time beyond that. Um, it was forty three and rain in the entire time mm -hmm. I was in Ireland. Doesn't matter what month. No, it doesn't. It's just forty three and rain. I, I do well there. Forty three yeah, and rain. It's raining. depressing. But I was like, whatever. So <laughs> I make my way up to this abbey, and um, and by now it's it's nearly full on dark. 
and it's like a Part, not a national park, but like a park. You, and yeah. The people weren't there. So. Say, you can't so I'm just see like, <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, I can't, I can't see. Who cares? So I make my way over to this abbey, and remember, the real reason I was going was to pray and and try, you know, pray for healing and right. and you know, and God's grace in my world. And no, we thought life. you were going for eye surgery. <laughs> yeah, well, that had already happened. Yeah. I was recovering from the recovering. surgery. I, cu I couldn't see because I was recovering. Oh. Uh, I went over there and did the surgery, and then I, like, had to stay until the pressure came back in my eyes. Oh, my word. Mm -hmm. Oh, so it was post-surgery, you're blind, and now you're at the yeah. Abbey, and it's dark. Okay, right. keep And I'm just, one, I'm just hoping I could see. I had no okay. idea whether I could still, whether I was still going to okay. be able to see still. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I make my way up, and, and it's, it's 43 and raining, and it's dark now, and I'm like, mm, this is a problem. So I get up under this bench. I put my I had a hoodie on or a, my sweatshirt on. I pulled my sweatshirt up over it and got up under this bench, and literally went to sleep. And uh, the next day, I I finally made my way back to went down to Waterford from there, and um, and wandered around Waterford for a while. Met a uh, met a, a bartender dude named Flash. <laughs> <laughs> and I told Flash my story, and Fla Flash Flash prayed for me right then, like right then. Flash the bartender prayed flash, for you? Flash the barkeep huh. uh, prayed for me at that point. And I walked out of there and started walking back to the hotel and started to be able to see. So 20, 24 hours ago or whatever, I was, you know, drinking a beer or two with my new friends. And blind right, at and a music festival. Blind at a music festival in Kilkenny. Mm -hmm. And now I'm in Waterford and, and Flash prayed for me and, <laughs> and now I'm better. I went back a few years later and Flash was still there. And uh, so that was kind of cool. Wow. Um, so that happened in 2012 because of the radiation. Then in 2014, the jaw thing happened. Okay. And, and you know, so, you know, in the, in the sort of the annals of my, my time, this was by far the worst, right? What are you going to do? Right. No and jaw, the, teeth falling out. Yeah. What are you going to do? What, what's your, what's your life going to be like, you know, if they have to do, you know, there was talk about 15 surgeries to replace, you know, to replace your jaw and mm -hmm. all these different things. I'm like, this ain't going to work. A friend of mine named Dick Weekly is uh, his brother. He and his brother own Dick Weekly Homes in Houston. Um, I was having lunch with him and uh, kind of sort of lamenting my my bad fortune for things that had happened and, and uh, try to explain it. And he goes, you need to come over to my house tonight. I'm like, I'm like, okay, so, I mean, you know, in the theme of, you know, I don't listen to anybody. I'm like, right. uh, I don't know, man. I just, I don't, I don't think I want to do it. So he talks me into coming over there. There's a guy over at his house who had come in, who lived part-time in Houston, but lived most of the, runs a house, owns a hospital in Munich, Germany, named Eckert Alt. Dr. Alt is, was the inventor of a, a new type of machine that would take uh, stem cells from your fat. And instead of spinning them around like they used to do, mm -hmm. like centrifuge, mm -hmm. they learned that that would damage the cells. Mm -hmm. But they mm -hmm. still needed to break the fat free from the fat matrix. And so he in, he invented this this he invented a means to to allow the, an enzyme, which is a fairly common compound enzyme, uh, to eat away the fat. They would then give you the stem cells back. Mm -hmm. And he invented this, and I'm sitting here talking to this guy. So I get halfway through my story, and he goes, "You need, you need to come to Munich." Like three days later, I was in Munich, and a few months later, they uh, they treated me, and uh, basically poked a bunch of holes in my jaw and uh, regrew my jawbone. Oh my word! Really? Really? Oh my word! Absolutely. So here, here's the question. Remember how we said we were going to play "Would You Rather" with Greg Phillips? Oh gosh. So you said that would be awful. Would you rather be blind after you're blind or would you rather lose your teeth? That's a good question. Um, <laughs> I, you've experienced both, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I can't imagine a life, you know, how people that are blind, how blind people do, but they're amazing people. Right. right. Mm -hmm. I know a few people that are blind and, and uh, I know some incredibly amazing people, incredibly talented and bright and, and they kind of make their way like it's like it's okay. Um, on the other hand, um, because of what ended up happening afterwards, I know a lot of people, um, um, special forces guys and and seals and others, that we figured out how to how we brought that technology back, the idea back, and we started some. Catherine and I started something called uh, Time for a Hero, and the idea was to 
another team of people, another set of doctors took the same type of technology that Dr. Alt did mm -hmm. and figured out a way to get it into your brain. So for these guys coming back with, um, with um, TBIs and all this kind of stuff, what they did was they figured out a, 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 there's a sugar alcohol called mannitol. Mm -hmm. And mannitol is a, um, a basically, re, among other things, relaxes the blood-brain barrier. Okay. So, so the, they would give them a shot of mannitol it would relax the blood brain barrier. In the meantime, they had taken some fat, a couple hundred cc's of fat, put it into it, processed it, gotten into an IV. Two hours later, these guys were walking out of there. Like, oh my goodness. I mean, there, I have friends to this, to this moment. Uh, uh, some of my uh, special forces and, and SEAL friends that, that we were able to treat um, that uh, we changed their lives. And all because I went to Haiti and did that. So, so to me, right. I, I'm not sure I can answer the question about what I would rather have. Um, but I don't think I would as, as, as challenging as it was at various times. And there were times mm -hmm. where I just like, you know, I can't do this. I, mm -hmm. You know, I, what am I going to do? How do you eat? If you don't have any teeth, what do you do? Um, and those are all sort of woe is me kind of things. But, but the, these people, that you know have have gone over the, uh, have gone you know willingly over volunteered to to be you know complete and total badasses on behalf of this country mm. and they go over and they come back and and we kind of take a walk from them you know we, you know we'll do surgeries on them we'll do all kinds of things to them but but you know if you're if you're a navy seal and you've just going through training you know, they have these these rockets, these Gustav rockets that you're only supposed to shoot like like two a month. These guys will shoot like four or five a day in training, mm. right? And you can see if you ever watch them, you can see the ground behind the shot. It's a it's a shoulder mounted thing. You can see the ground behind the shot, the over pressure and under pressure as it goes down, then comes mm -hmm. back up, and all mm -hmm. the dirt and mm -hmm. dust and everything. Same thing's going on in their brains, right? And these guys are getting banged up and beat up and 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 you know destroyed. And the very idea that this government knows that this is a, that that this exists, mm -hmm. that it's a possibility, but we had to take them. I had to go to Germany to get mine. We had to take them to the Bahamas to get theirs because the United States wouldn't let it happen. Mm -hmm. How could that be? Yeah, that's just you know what are we doing? Right. And right. so and so if you think whether it's vaccines or stem cells or so, or anything else that's going on out there, and this government knows that this stuff is is possible and real and can make a difference in people, <clears throat> excuse me, can make a difference in people's lives and we cover it up. Mm -hmm. Who are we? Right. Okay. But like, okay. So the moral of the story time with Greg Phillips is if you're listening, there's dog dewormer. Listen to God. Mm -hmm. well, listen to God. Number one. Number listen one. to God. Listen. And if you need to go to Spain and walk, do that. Go. And then there's dog dewormer. There's flash. And there's this new technology. Now, is it here yet? Or do you still have to go to the Bahamas? That's a great question. Um, the, the, a, f a, f a few weeks after, let me get this straight in my head here. A week before I went to Spain to do my walk, a hurricane came through and destroyed the clinic. They ended up not being able to rebuild it and and ended up uh, selling off the technology to somebody. So the answer to that piece is no. But here's what is interesting. Um, Josh Harkins, uh, he's the uh, chairman of Senate Finance in Mississippi okay. State Senate. Josh and I have been working on these right to try bills, trying to get it right for years. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think I think Josh and I, not me, Josh, he's the he's the member. And, you know, I, I think I help advise and not much more. Um, but we were able to pass a right to try bill that allowed first allowed people that were, you know, dying of whatever to try something, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but there were no real protections for the doctors, no real protections for yeah. the insurance companies or the, or the, the drug providers or whatever. And so nobody really wanted to participate. So a couple of years later we came back and made a few changes. Josh made a few necessary changes in it that gave those, those, um, um, those providers the ability, you know, to do things without fear of getting sued. 
And then finally we came back and added traumatic injury to it. It wasn't mm-hmm. just, it mm-hmm. wasn't just mm-hmm. sickness to it. We came back and added traumatic injury to it. Um, uh, I have a friend that, that is, um, advancing the same kind of technology started as a vet doing it for animals. Um, um, and now he's, he's, he's in, I think stage three of his, of his trials, uh, in humans. Um, but he is going to bring his technology to Mississippi and we're going to start doing this in Mississippi. Now everybody has right to try laws, but nobody has right to try laws. Like we, like, like we were able to um, work with Josh to get passed and um, look, I think Senator Harkins and what he accomplished is is as life saving as anything else that anyone's ever done. Um, and now that uh, Bob Harmon's the name of the doctor is going to be bringing his his tech into right. the state. Um, uh, Bob was telling me just just this week, I think that um, that he's got like forty seven people that that we could bring in like immediately wow. to get treated for the, with this stuff. And if that if that the kind of thing that's out there that's possible that's it's legit, but, but the FDA just can't quite figure out how to, you know, get past their own ridiculousness. Mm-hmm. First of all, they're my cells. Right. right. And they'll happily let you take them out and give them right back to you. Right. But if you don't break them free from the fat matrix and you don't find a way to, to sort of reactivate them and, 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 and get them into wherever they're going, then it really, it's really sort of ineffective so it's okay to use these enzymes. It's okay to use your own cells, but the FDA says you can't use them together. That is insane. Really? Really. You can't use them. You know why? It, it's more than minimally manipulating the cells, and that's their standard. You, can't, you can minimally manipulate them, but nothing more. And this is more than minimal manipulation. But they're your cells. Right. Right. They're yours <laughs> to start with. Right. So, so let me ask you, and that kind of gets to where, we, and golly, we're already... Way, I mean, way over. We need, I mean, we need this, a part this two. This is yeah. like, yeah, yeah, part two. You can just do two parts right now. Yeah, but but no, I kind of want to jump where where you are in that our government, our leadership has things that they they hide from people. Clearly, in my opinion, it's immoral, evil to to not allow Americans to be able to have their eyesight saved right. or to be able the chance to have a jawbone fixed or have the, the damage that's caused from military services, et cetera, fixed. So it, it kind of gives you this idea that, hey, these, these aren't necessarily the greatest folks. They'll tell you what you need to know. They'll hide things necessarily. They'll, they'll plot and this may scheme. Mm-hmm. And so let's fast forward to where you are when it comes to these elections. Alabama elections, national elections, 2020, was were, were your experiences in your regular life part of you being able to look at what is going on in our election system and go, you know what? People would do that. Because I think I think Americans have this this catch in their spirit where they're like, no, this is America. That that doesn't happen. People don't do these things. Right. We, we have the would best never elections here, right? Yes, we have the best. We have the best health care. We have the best this. The, the government's mm-hmm. looking out for us. The G Men will show up and save us. They'll Yeah. I mean, did, did your life experience kind of help you to go, you know what, people, government folks, folks would do these things. Mm-hmm. I think that, um, I think that, that the Catherine and I meeting each other in the way that we did was fortuitous. Um, she had been targeted by the government. Um, she filed for her C3 and a C4. And a couple of days later, she was sued. Um, so she, she claimed she had never been in court before that day and has never been out of court <laughs> since. <laughs> um, so she had, she had 23 different instances where the FBI, the FDA, uh, the ATF, uh, OSHA, and everybody showed up at her house and her business basically destroyed her life. Um, and I had a little bit of that going on from the IRS, but nothing mm-hmm. like she did. The way we actually met was we have a mutual friend, a mutual donor passed away a guy named Foster Freeze who introduced us and said, actually it was his son, Steve, but um, he introduced us to say, Hey, if y'all are being targeted by the same people, surely there's a technology footprint. Mm. And because mm. my background is in, is in technology yeah. and, and sort of tracking these footprints and finding the bad guys and doing these things um, that, that resonated with me. So, so I went down to, to Houston, met with Catherine and, and, and this lady, y'all, is, um, she's not just a leader, but, but she is a, a, 
a charismatic leader that knows election process better than any person that I've ever known, met. I've done this for 40 years. She's done it for 12. She knows infinitely more than I do about all of this. And she's able to um, um, bring different different teams of people together that can do things and, and bringing us in with some of her other folks and, and really leveraging her expertise and process is really what got us here. Now, ultimately, when it came down to it, um, it just took, I mean, it was sort of brute force. I mean, we had to, we had to, you know, take 10,000 calls and sort through them all and figure out, okay, are there any, are there any common threads here? And Mm -hmm. if so, how do we exploit that? Um, And what do we analyze after that? And then finally, how do we disseminate the information? But each, each of the, pieces of the path along the way wouldn't have happened had it not been for Catherine. So, you know, whether I would lived or died in cancer or, or anything else, she has the ability to pull people together in ways that are, that are not only meaningful, but that are impactful. Uh, she's doing this thing right now called uh, uh, protect America dot vote. Mm-hmm. It's with all the sheriffs. And so okay. it's, it started with one sheriff's group. I think next week we're connecting with another one. Uh, out in Vegas. And then from there, we're going to try to add as many as we can. We've got a goal to get to about 2,500 or so. Uh, It's, it's, it's certainly um, 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 an aggressive goal, but our biggest challenge by far in all of this is how do we going back to this trust issue with the government? Mm -hmm. If you know that a crime's been committed, Mm -hmm. we have, we have two petabytes of information to prove this. How big is a petabyte? Uh, a, a, a one lot. one petabyte is a is a thousand terabytes. A thousand terabytes. How okay. big is a terabyte? Ten years ago, a terabyte would fit in this room. One. One. Ten years ago, okay. well, 12, fifteen years ago. Okay. And now it's now you know I carry you know I carry a hundred petabyte terabytes around in my in my in a. Don't bag, say your pocket. In my bag. Okay. Um, and again. and the um. Once you get there and you've 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 you found the the targets, you fixed on them, you execute whatever you're doing, um, and you have to figure out what you're going to do to exploit that. How can we learn from it? So what we learned in San Luis, Arizona, you know, we had to translate into somewhere else. And what we learned in Atlanta, what does that look like in comparison to Philadelphia? And how do you how do how does one exploit the, exploit those kinds of things? That is Catherine's genius. She has the ability to understand how most of this fits into process. And while a lot of people were looking at a lot of different things, and we don't really have any opinion one way or another about them. I mean, for me, if you're fighting for freedom, whether I agree with exactly your path or not, you know, I'll stand there and fight with you. I don't, I don't right. care. Um, but Catherine's way is to figure out how to exploit things. And once you start that exploitation, for us, it was picking five, six, seven other areas to do our work in. Um, and then continue to just hammer home that, that, that necessity to get more and more and more data. So we're, con- we just got Green Bay, uh, Wisconsin's, uh, video in from the election. We just got it in like last week wow. mm-hmm. and it's because Catherine stayed on it and just, just never quits. She never stops and her team never stops. So they're able to gather things, but once you get it and you understand that it's a crime, mm. what do you do? Yeah. Right. right. So the dissemination of the data is critically important. So, um, because you don't want to run to the government. And if you do, who do you run to? Right. So for us, it was the first thing we did was we took it to the FBI because that's what we would normally do in mm-hmm. these instances. Um, and that, how was that response? That makes my head. That's exactly what there, I wanted. There, there are some. There are some really great people in the the the. the most of the main federal agencies have an intelligence community linkage. The, the IC is a, is a link of people from the different agencies that work together to surface mm-hmm. information and bring information and get it where it needs to go. Mm-hmm. Like if uh, somebody in the IC community and in, in, in the CIA finds something that, you know, they need at the um, marshal's office or something like that and, you know, Montana, right. um, that would be the way those things would be surfaced and then handed off. Okay. Um, and, and so there's some really great people in the IC community. Um, these people are, um, are, are 
hugely dedicated public servants, most of them. I mean, of course, there's always bad apples around, right? And, you know, we've had our own problems. But the problem comes when you get to what we call, what we're now calling political law enforcement. Mm -hmm. When mm -hmm. you get above those mm -hmm. that those guys and ladies down here, yeah. and they, and these are these are amazing people, like super smart, um, some great analysts, some people that do things. That, I mean, like what you what made you even think of that, right? Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, I can't, I can't even you know I wouldn't have thought about that if I had a whole lifetime, and you just mm -hmm. did it while we were sitting here. Um, those are the kind of people that are sort of in that IC group. But once you get out of that and you get, you know, to the local offices that sometimes mm -hmm. have politics around them, but right. sure enough, you get up to DC yeah. and in the headquarters, you know, what are you going to do? It's mm -hmm. like, it's like, you know, stem cells or anything else. Do, who do we trust? Right. So our, our next few options are state law enforcement. Some states it's a, it's an attorney general and some states it's like a, in Georgia, it's Georgia Bureau of Investigation. Mm -hmm. um, and then you kind of start making your way back down and it's local police mm -hmm. departments and, you know, they, their budgets aren't set in such a way that even if they are great people and, you know, you always get to, to the cops and, you know, the people that are mm -hmm. on the ground, you're like, you know, I, you know, we'd do anything for these guys mm -hmm. right? and they do anything to have the data, but, you know, but they're, their budget still can't afford it. And, and so we're sort of stuck in this conundrum, right? Like, what do you do? Okay. So if you can't disseminate it and you can't get any arrests done, what do you do? Catherine's idea to go to these sheriffs and to bring the sheriffs into, into the loop and give us another option is genius. Mm -hmm. Because as we create, let's just say that this room was our, or this building was our fusion center. And we were gathering all sorts of open source information from anonymous researchers, from, you know, known researchers, our geospatial analysis, we're bringing in all this different stuff and you bring it all together and then you, you're, you're done and you're like, okay, Scott, yeah, go, right. what are you going to do? We're going to go have a podcast or we're going to go call Tucker or we're going to, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, we're going to do something. What are we going to do? But the real something is often law enforcement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you can't get past political law enforcement and into a place where, um, where the where the politics doesn't matter that the and it's not about partisanship. It's about as Mar Mark Lamb, Sheriff Mark Lamb said, it's about the rule of law. Right, right. And and that's is what it's all about. But if you walk into a into a um, police department or a George, head of the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, and and they completely dismiss you before you even have a chance to talk. And the next thing you know, they go down to the to the newspaper, and or the first they go to the FBI, get the data that you gave to the FBI, right. and then go turn it over to the newspaper. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, then you become the target, mm -hmm. right? So when the when the researchers or the the citizens and the voters become the targets, what happens then? We had a situation in uh, Arizona recently. Um, We've long said one of the very first places we looked, um, a guy named Gary Snyder and another guy named David Laura really exposed a, 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 a sort of a body of corruption in, in, in Yuma County, Arizona. And it's resulted in a couple of arrests. There are going to be more. Um, and we took the a few days after I took the information to Georgia, first it mm -hmm. went to the Bureau, then it went to GBI. Okay. And then a few days later, I went out to Arizona and read in the um, Arizona um, Attorney General's office, who's leading the investigation out there. They've held that investigation and, or conducted that investigation. And, and uh, you know, a couple of them are pretty good guys. A couple of them are just flat out, you know, politicians, haters. Mm -hmm. right. And so what they did was they basically turned it on us. They, they secretly recorded some meetings that we had oh with them. Gosh. And, and Catherine, God bless her, bump busted him on it. Mm -hmm. she, she was sitting across the table. I was talking to one of them. She's, she's sitting where you are looking at him. She's like, are you taping this? And he goes, yeah. <gasps> and those kind of things are crazy. But listen mm -hmm. to what else they did. Mm -hmm. there were, have y'all seen the movie? Yes. Yeah. All right. So in the movie, there's a, a Hispanic lady kind of in the shadows that we kept there purposefully. This person lives there in the community. Mm -hmm. And, um, and they knew who she was. We knew who she was. Um, and so I personally went and did the interviews with her, promised her, you know, we'd never tell and we never have. Um, but, but the Arizona Attorney General's office turned over the witness information from the people who have already been convicted. 
Now, remember, there are still investigations going on. They turned over the witness contact information to the AP. Oh, my gosh. Wait. So the really? Attorney General's office, office in Arizona. Turn, oh. How could it be? So, so this goes back. Now, let's go back to this trust thing, right? Steve right. Marshall let's go back, you know, whether right. it's about, you know, stem cells or eye surgery yeah. or vaccines or, or citizen research or, you know, anonymous research or whatever it is or, or legit. You know, legitimate paid information. We have two petabytes of information. This is a lot of information. We have, we're probably over 5 million minutes now of surveillance video. Mm -hmm. You know how much they've watched in Georgia? Oh, zero. I they've watched zero. You know how we know that? Because they never asked us for it. We're the only ones that have some of it because the counties have now killed it. It just, you can't make this stuff up. And, and it goes to the highest levels, right? It, it absolutely goes to the highest levels. And, and, you know, Governor Kemp's chief of staff really directed a, some hate campaign against some of our people. Mm -hmm. uh, they, you know, we had we had contractors that were canceled with some of their customers because of him. Um, you know, the head of the GBI went to the went to the Atlanta paper and burned me by name and two of my analysts that we keep their names secret. You know, it's hard to find my name. It's really hard to find yeah. their names. Right. And went and burned them by name in the paper. And so when the when the when the researcher, it's kind of like you you know you all hear all this time. Um, what is it? What's the, what's the DHS saying? See something, say something. Yes. Yeah. See something, say something. You're the target. Right. Right. We're going right. to get right. you. We're right. going to kill you. And we've got a story coming up here in the next few weeks that y'all remember we talked about this here in a few weeks because we have a story that is so ridiculously shocking that people turned something that we were, we didn't just surface this information. We were involved in a, in a significant counterintelligence operation with the United States government and, and got twisted around, turned on us and they made us the targets. Is this the multinational is, is the, player? Yeah. Can I read your quote? I don't know. What did I say? <laughs> this was when, it's a good where, one. Where, where was it quoted? Patel Patriot. Where was it quoted? Oh yeah. You can quote John. <laughs> I Yeah. I, okay. Anyway, I'll look up his, um, you discovered with True the Vote a multinational player involving federal agencies that will be so explosive that it will make everyone forget about the mules, which is kind of hard to do. But And it will call into question everything we think we know about these elections. You go on to say there is unmistakable proof. We've been a part of a large counterintelligence operation involving federal agencies and ourselves that has been going on for a long time in this country. Okay, so you were working with these agencies and somehow you became the target, Right. but you have the information. Right. That's kind of scary. I kind of makes me excited because yeah. like, I, you know, from it's hard. I'm just like a mom from Shelby County, Alabama, but just watching what's happening intuitively, even though we're not on the inside, like, you know, things are right. right. Like something weird is going yeah. on. And I'm not sure who's playing puppet master, but like, this is bizarre. I feel like I, I tell my kids all the time, they're from 14 to 20. And I'm like, I wish y'all could go back to the eighties and nineties. It was the best. I think the things were at play then, but we didn't know it. So ignorance is bliss or you were involved with all the Republican parties. Maybe it was, but you know, and so it's like, I don't know who's playing us, but we're being played. And maybe this will shed some light onto what's going on. And I'm so curious as to why you think these things happen, why the attorney general turns its own citizens over to the media. Like what, what is the main motivation and what's happening? They're trying to silence us. But why? Because the deep state is all about, you can call them whatever you want. Deep state. We used to call it the shadow government. They're all about money, power, and control. There was a Supreme Court case this week that was maybe the most consequential case, notwithstanding the abortion stuff yeah. or anything else. The the um, West Virginia v. EPA case was yep. decided this week. And on its surface, it looks like just, oh, well, West Virginia and the coal, the coal, some of the big coal companies were fighting against the EPA because they didn't like what they did. But, but the underlying premise for the ruling was the most consequential thing maybe that that's ever happened at least in the last hundred plus years yeah. and and the reason is the way that the deep state or, or the shadow government was built was because congress ceded their power to the president right. 
to the mm -hmm. ex executive branch. The executive branch didn't want to do anything because, you know, they might let, you know, whatever it is, they might be for, um, you know, they may not care about coal, but yet their constituents are really caring about coal. Right. So they get these, you know, green new deals and all this stuff passed. And rather than passing it through Congress or getting an executive, even executive order done on it, which I think are even in trouble as well. But what they do is they give it to the EPA or they give it to the IRS right. or they give it to the FDA or they right. give it to the CDC. Mm -hmm. And these people pass rules that have the force and effect of law. And what this ruling said was fairly simply is Congress cannot cede lawmaking authority mm -hmm. to the executive branch. And to extend that even further, surely down into these unelected officials that run all this stuff. Right. So all of these things that have happened, and and you know, no matter where it is, so many th um, kind of to tie it back to elections. One of the big challenges that we all, every state, almost every state had last year, were um, were these consent decrees. So Mark Elias and and the left came in and right. sued all these states. And all these Republican secretaries of state just caved in and folded. The rest of them, it was all the Democrats, it was all set up. But they came in and they folded and they signed all these consent decrees. That consent decree had the force and effect of changing everything we do. That's how the that's how this mass bailing was done. That's how they got away with this. These weren't laws that were passed. Right. right. You know, they they figured out ways to get these drop boxes in and and um and, and so so the seeding of the power of lawmaking authority was given to these bureaucrats. And they're unelected, most of them, not, not the secretaries of state in most cases. Um, but they're, they're seeded. If, if, if we allow the, the uncontrolled to pass rules and regs that have that force and effect of law, that's how the deep state was built over the last hundred years. I mean, look back into Roosevelt's time. How do you how do you think that uh, that the um, the New Deal was passed? Mm -hmm. Right, right. Well, it's a lot the of media, that stuff. It's Dr. Fauci. They use all these little outlets to institute their agenda without having to do it. It. I, I mean, I go back mm -hmm. to Kay Ivey to bring it back to Alabama. Everybody thinks she's this great governor. I'm like, she really does. She makes all of her people under her do all the things because right. she doesn't want to take it on, and. And the American people just let this administration, other administrations, do it. Like we fall into it. We think, okay, well, getting well, we think, well, we'll just we accept think somebody Twitter will stop kicking it. us off. Yeah, and how many times? How many times did we read in the paper during the Trump administration? Well, I can't. Did Trump know about that? What happened? How did yeah. that happen? Yeah. It, that's how it happened. Yeah. It, and we got so yeah. distracted by being called mean. Yeah. And for calling people out or for nice. speaking the right. truth or saying that's actually incorrect. I mean, like, that's unbelievable that here you bring all this truth and we're still stuck on. But that wasn't very nice. Mm -hmm. Like, that's pathetic. Yeah, it is pathetic. And, and you know, and we just let it go on and on and on. Look, I, th I think that, that if mules did nothing else, it's going to raise an entirely new generation of people that are, you know, younger than us that are that are willing to say not just something ain't right, mm. but something ain't right, I'm going to do something about it. That's right. right. I'm right. hoping. There's a whole new generation of people that are coming forward and, and you know, wanting to participate and calling us and volunteering. And we haven't seen things like this before. This is huge. Going back to Alabama, mm. it, it, there's nothing anyone can do about it at this juncture. But the lack of transparency in this Secretary of State and in his office and in the work that they're doing is outrageous. It's outrageous. The shouting down, you know, this whole targeting thing that I've talked about, uh, you know, my, my, my oldest son is, who's one of our, our key people in our video, in our video shop, um, had something go, go wrong with his, with his voting, with his registration or something. And all of a sudden other people's voting, cards started coming to his house in Hoover. Pretty weird, right? It's right? weird. What's really weird is, you know who called him about it? John Merrill. That's real weird. <laughs> it's creepy. Okay, wait, wait, what did he say? He said, oh man, it was just a mistake. You know, are you, you know, you got any questions? You know, whatever he does. I mean, I don't know. Look, 
That's well, so funny. I'll tell it's you. It's completely <laughs> random. It's, 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 it's kind of creepy more than it's funny, I think. But, but look, here, here, here's, we have a lot of issues. The first one, we all just experienced this thing here in Alabama where, and in Georgia and elsewhere, where all these crossover votes happen. Yeah. They're going to have to close these primaries. This is not, when I went to work right. for the party back in the early 80s, I think we had like two legislators that were Republicans. Right. There, were no, there were no Republicans. Our Capital Club, the sustaining giving thing had like 53 people in it or something right. like that. <laughs> oh, was, those was, were the days where ridiculous. Republicans were probably actually Republicans. Yeah, they really, man, yeah. They, they, those are the Reagan days, right? And, um, and, and it's just not okay to allow the other side to manipulate an election. I mean, right. I know people, a lot of people are going to fuss and fight about that. And, you know, but I just think we're past those days, right? We right. can't, we can't do it. We saw it in Mississippi back in 2014 when, um, uh, Thad Cochran and Chris McDaniel got in a runoff over there and, and, you know, by all everything we could see, McDaniel was going to win handily. And next thing you know, just all kinds of crossover votes came right. in and, the, and, and kind saved of the day for and, the establishment and swayed the, swayed the thing. Mm -hmm. I, th I think we as a country are sort of past some of that. You know, I, I have mixed feelings about it. It's certainly not a true the vote issue because they're nonpartisan. Mm -hmm. But for me personally, having been around all this for a while, I think we're past that time now. Right. The other thing we've got to do is we've got to we've got to we've got to create transparency in these elections. The number one complaint that I have about John, notwithstanding the fact that he called my son sort of oddly, um, is you can go online right now, right now, and download Ohio's voter voter rolls. Right. About seven times what we have here. Uh, you can go download download Florida's. I think it's a hundred bucks. You can download California's for twenty bucks. You can download all these. Alabama, forty thousand dollars. Why? You know right. why? Because they don't want transparency. Well, I will say they John do Merrill not want transparency. Was on our podcast. We had him on earlier. It might be interesting for you to go back and watch it. But he said, and I asked him about why we charge a penny per voter for the voter rolls. And, you know, of course, he said the legislature can change it. It's not my, you know, they can change it, but he he basically said there should be some sort of buy-in to get that information. Why? I don't know why? if you said a why. So, so with the Senate 27 thing, wouldn't we all have been better off if everybody just could have gone and looked in their yes. own database and said, hey, that lady's not registered? Wouldn't it have been? Why, why, why yeah. are we so afraid? Why is it Why is it okay for Florida to open it up to everybody, but it's not okay right. for Alabama? What are we hiding? Well, don't we publish it in newspapers? Isn't that one of our laws? Well, yeah, but who's going to... Right, you're but, the but senator. But what I'm saying is, if yeah, the small newspaper know. can get paid... To show the voter mm. roll, then we should be able to just look at the voter roll, right? Because it was printable. You know, I, mm. there's two 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 points here. This is this is vintage Merrill. First, <laughs> the first the first thing is yes, the legislature can make that decision. They can, but they didn't. Mm -hmm. He made that decision. The Secretary of State made that decision. He can change it today. He could, with a stroke of a pen, say, we're not going to charge this anymore. And if he wants buy-in, then set it at 1000 Why set it at 40000 right. That's I mean, out, That's outrageous. Has, yeah. The, the, the second part of it is, it, if, if we believe in freedom and we're willing to fight for it, who, who is John Merrill to say that I need to buy in to that? I need to buy into freedom? Let me tell you, I, I've, I've paid my my dues yeah. to it. I'll continue to do it, but he's got no right to say that. What, what if it was, what if it was a bunch of, I don't know, a bunch of college kids that just wanted to clean up the voter roll like Charlie did. All right. With, with turning point, mm -hmm. they just want to do something. Yeah. They just want to clean them up. These kids don't have any money, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean that they're, they're the value of their research is any more or less significant. And I, I would say, I would say again, this isn't, this isn't about politics, right? This is about money, power, and control. Mm -hmm. John's traveling all over the United States, making all these speeches, going to all these places, going to these colleges and making speeches, trying to make himself seem like he's this election wizard. And, and I, I, I simply don't understand why he would be willing, not just willing, but, but really aggressively, 
cover up the bloat in these voter rolls. Yeah. I don't know anybody who thinks it's less than 100,000 names that shouldn't be on there. Yeah. I don't know anyone who thinks it's less than 100,000. It's a lot. Well, we're not even going to have time to ask about no, all these statewide to, races we, no, that we were like 6337. No. Scott, you cut of me things. off every time. Just hold on. <laughs> Hold on. You're the one that always tells me we got to go. <laughs> no, we don't have to go. I'm just getting started. I have a funny story to tell. It's okay. a John Darrell story. Oh, do story. tell that, please. And it's why I say it's funny that all those cards came to your son's house. Because we had to vote absentee. And have I told you all this story? No, you no. haven't. Oh, this is hysterical. Okay. So we were out of town. <sighs> Actually, we weren't out of town. I felt I had guilt. I have to confess. So I thought we were going to be out of town on the 21st. I right. thought we flew back in. Like do I have it, to do a confession? No, no confession. No, no but this is just so I can sleep at night. So so the 21st. No, well, I, don't, I don't. So we're safe there. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, okay. So you thought you were going to be out so of the county. I thought we were going to be out of the county. Okay. And we flew in and got in at like midnight on the 21st. Well, turns out. And so we applied for absentee ballots. Because I wouldn't be able to sleep if I didn't vote too. You know, and so. Okay. Well, then I realized we get back Monday night. So I'm like, oh, gosh, now what do I do? Because, like, do I show up and vote? Do I vote on the absentee? I don't want to go to jail. What do I do? I got the answer to that. So I just am going to vote absentee. Honest mistake. I go to open our ballots the night before we're leaving. So probate office is closed. And I open our ballots. And I open my envelope. And I have two ballots. In my envelope. What? Do you still have them? No. What? <laughs> but I don't know. So do you know what I did? You didn't call me. <laughs> I called John Merrill. Did you really? And of nice. course, John Merrill answers the phone from anybody. But I'm like, this is hysterical because I, I, I honestly needed to know what to do. Like, do I throw it away? Do I burn it? Do um, I fill out both? Do I both? vote twice? No. So I, I, I called him and I'm like, no. um, I just Do I go to... get my mule out of the pasture? Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Hire one of my kids to go put it in a box. No. So I, I, you know, he answers before it even rings. It's bizarre. If you call John Merrill, he will answer your phone call. Mm -hmm. I'll give him that. And so I said, you know, I don't really know what to do. This has happened. And he said, well, you know, fill out your ballot and then put it in the secret envelope and then put the other ballot in the outside envelope, whatever. The funny part was, as we're getting off the phone, he goes, That's of weird. course this would happen to you. You're going to be all over Facebook telling everybody about how our elections are unfair and our elections are whatever. And I said, well, lucky for you, I'm headed out of town and I'm really rushed and I don't have time to do that. And I told, you know, I'm like, this is not a nefarious. Like to me, this is just like, when two dollar bills are stuck together, two pieces of paper. Like, but did, did it? Does it not bother you though? If it happened to you, how many others it happened to? Yeah, but that I, may have cast that other ballot. Mm -hmm. I told him I wanted. I said I'm tempted to fill out both, and he was like, "Don't no, do that. No, I'll, I'll have to come arrest you." And I was like, "Okay, well, I was kidding." Um, right, right. But what if that happened to a hundred thousand other people? Right. Well, and that that's what if it true. To people what that what if it knew, happened to what if it happened right to places. what if it happened to two extra people in Senate Sunday twenty seven? No, and that's that's exactly what I posted about that. I was like about that whole story. If you don't think your one vote matters, it matters bigly. Even if there's right. an extra. Even if there's an extra. So I don't think I can't I don't I don't think that that was like nefarious in nature. That's human error. When you have humans involved in something, that's human error. However, it does show Except those envelopes aren't stuffed by humans. Who stuffs them? A machine sorter wait nobody puts like my absentee ballot wasn't folded by a person mm. no so, way i know so. the mailings we used to do for campaigns the machine just <laughs> folds them up and sometimes you had to have people staff them stuff them but then sometimes you could have them paid to stuff them too so i would imagine all that's okay i'm gonna have to check on into that of thousands of them. do you not think it's funny that your son got all of those registration cards and i got two ballots it's I mean, like it's, it's god's sense of humor kind of well 
I, I would I would venture to say that we could clean up a lot of these questions. You know, a lot of this is about trust, and Americans and Alabamians don't trust their elections right now, whether it's about those crazy numbers that came through and crossover votes or whatever it is. The reality is America doesn't trust right now. Right. And when people like Merrill and people, and it's not just Merrill, but it's it's secretaries of state all over the, all over the country that are covering this crap up and their, their, their unwillingness to be transparent is causing Americans anger. It's right. the cause. It's not, it's, he's not assuaging it by saying, oh, well, I need people to buy in. Who, right. who, well, we, we've asked on this program. My, let, let, let me tell you, right. I, have, I have friends that bought in to this freedom thing with their lives. Mm-hmm. Right. So the buy-in, I think, already happened. It's we, a paradigm shift. Like, we've asked on this program, well, how hard is it to just say, fine, prove me wrong. Right. And, 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 yeah. and just have an audit done or ha- and have somebody come in, just randomly pick. I mean, I heard one of the secretary of state candidates talk about how, well, the legislature decided, uh, I think it's already been decided which counties will actually audit next time. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. We already know which ones we're going to audit, which means those will be right. That's and then, Yeah. And, and surely that was wrong. I hope, I hope. No, that's that was, true. That's, that's that was, true. That's true. That's we already true. picked the ones. Yeah. Well, and don't you think the other part of it is, and we've said this a lot on our show, is the problem becomes, and this is why people don't trust, you're not allowed to ask questions and you're dismissed right. for asking them. We are the enemy. So we're, we are asking. the enemy. So John covers it up with all smooth and shine and stars and rainbows and glitter. And meanwhile, we probably have 100 extra thousand, 100,000 extra people on the rolls, just guessing. Um, so we're not unlike any other state. But for the people who are watching this and are intrigued and interested, just remember to be careful of the people that you're not allowed to question. Mm. That's the problem. Yeah. I agree with that 100%. Look, I, I talked to, the, to I haven't talked to the um, Democrat Party chairman of it, but I did talk to John the other day, John Wall. Mm-hmm. And we talked about this exact topic, you know, and I told, I told John, I said, look, I, I'm not interested in this from a partisan perspective. Right. You know, like I told everybody during meals, this isn't about saving Republicans. It's about saving the Republic. Right. Mm-hmm. People don't trust. They don't trust. And when the whole thing blew up in Senate 27, you know, I think that, um, you know, they acted quickly. They didn't have all the information they needed. And then, you know, John and, and company tried to, you know, he ended up, I guess, pulling out before he, before he, uh, you know, had to do the recount or the re look at by the executive committee. But John and I agree on this. This transparency issue is a big, mm-hmm. big deal. All the nonsense, <laughs> most of the nonsense that went on in this country in 2020 was because the voter rolls are dirty. Right. Clean the voter rolls and let everybody have it. You know, if he wants people to invest in freedom, I'll tell you what. Tell you what, John. Oh shoot! I'll invest in the freedom, and then I'll publish the rolls. How about that? I'll bring you a check for forty thousand dollars. That way, I have my investment, and I'll publish the rolls so that everyone can see them. It's fair, right? You want to buy in? That's my buy in. <laughs> That'd be helpful. I'll take a copy. <laughs> We've been doing some canvassing. That would be helpful. Uh, It'd be, tremendous. It'd be helpful to everyone. I don't have forty thousand dollars. It doesn't well, matter. It doesn't matter what side you're on. This well, what, isn't about sides. This is right. about truth. It isn't right. It is. well, when you look at it from the political standpoint, you know, I, my friends, it's it's funny because Republicans are just now realizing over the last few years, hey, there's something wrong. Mm-hmm. There's something wrong in elections, um, and it may be your experience is the same as mine. Democrats have known something is wrong for a long time. Oh yeah, because they have been getting the shaft in their primaries with a lot of this stuff all down in little rural places in rural yeah. South Alabama and in the big cities. I mean, they have known that manipulation has been going on for a long time. We're just now catching up because right. we're seeing it. That's why I said I haven't talked to the chairman yet, but I'm, I'm confident that I, don't, I just don't know who would be opposed to this. Right. Who is, who is opposed to, to shining the bright light of freedom on those roles? Yeah. Look, if it's a bunch of Republicans, okay. We did a challenge in uh in georgia in in the runoff in 2020 so in december of 2020 on december 15th we we with georgia citizens challenged 364,000 voters that were on the rolls that shouldn't have been mm. two days later elias Wait, 364,000 yes 
of which 45,000 voted, by the way, in that runoff. Okay. 70,000 voted in the general in 2020 that were not supposed to vote. And that was the general that was decided by 12,000 votes? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, and the... It's, it's still in court, and I, there's not a lot of things I can't, can say, but I can say this with certainty. 58% of, of those names were known Republicans. 57% were white. So we got sued for, for suppression of black people's votes. Right. So this was white. These were white Republicans. Right. Those roles are dirty, and they're bloated, right. and they've got to be cleaned. Right. We won't have clean and fair in elections until those voter rolls are clean. It just it doesn't matter. I don't care what party you're in. Right. Freaking fix it. It's just not that hard. Yeah. And, you and know, it is hard to figure out who is opposed to that, except for the people who are profiting from that. Money, power, and control is driving Always. one right. or all the decisions, right? That's what so people- which is worse, the crazy numbers in Alabama, the 6337s, or the unbelievable turnouts in the primaries in Georgia? Man, I, where people who just, like, the Secretary of State, I, I was shocked yeah, at that race. To me, to me personally, I, th- I think that... Um, You know, everything, some of you may have heard me say, everything is an info op, everything. And in in this case, the the voters got played. They got played by rules that allow for crossover voting. Mm -hmm. They got played by dirty voter rolls. They got played by all the things that we all talk about. This isn't that hard. Right. I think Sheriff Lamb says that in the little video, too. This isn't that hard. Right. right. We can fix this, mm-hmm. right? I mean, we can fix this it's fast. Basic stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is blocking and tackling right. stuff. I mean, we can produce a we can produce the list of dupes and people that have moved and whatever in Alabama. You know, if I get that list tomorrow, um, I'll 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 fix this, or I'll I'll, have, I'll produce the list to everybody Monday. Right. Right. I mean, this isn't rocket science. We, and at least we have a basis because the voter right. role is always changing. Hundred percent. But at least we have some sort of place to start. Fourteen percent, or, or I think it's one of the moving companies say fourteen percent of Americans move every year. I think the census says it's more like eleven or twelve. But let's just say that it's ten. Okay. And you haven't cleaned the rolls in three years. Right. You've, you've got you've got a problem. Yeah. Right. right. Stop. And they're like, well, that's mostly Republicans moving. Right. Right. It doesn't let's matter. That's it. what people right. like. I agree. That are like what. <laughs> You know, why do you care so much if there was voter fraud in Alabama? Because your guy, meaning Trump, won. And I'm like, this isn't about Trump. It's right, not about right, Biden. Right. This is about doing what's right. About, like you said, there's either laws or there aren't. There's either rules and order or there's chaos and anarchy. And we're like descending upon this weird mm-hmm. banana republic of right. America that is just bizarre. And it, and it's true. And I, we learned that this election was so hard hard on Alabama. We had a really, the U S Senate race was exhausting. Like I feel like we all learned a lot. Mm -hmm. And at the end of it, you know, if, if the people win, I'm fine with that. Even if it's not my candidate, but now I look back and I'm like, Hmm, right. Did did those people really really win? win? And -hmm. that's a terrible feeling. So, um, and then then what some people might be, and you, you may not know because, maybe just not historical, but you have been involved in Republican Party politics. Um, I was first elected in 98 to the uh, to the Alabama House and served 16 years down there. And there was every election cycle, I was heavily involved in trying to take over and get Republicans elected, et cetera. But every election cycle, there was always, and many of them were in our own primaries, where I was like, I just I talked to my consultant buddies. How did that happen? That was no, and it, it was invariably the establishment's person. Right. And I was just like, this is, I mean, I know it doesn't take rocket science. I've been to the places where there's a the box and there's two workers and they're best buddies. And, you know, four people could have come in, but 500 people voted. I mean, possibly. Sure. And it's not, it's not hard to do even in the old ways. But, uh, you know, how long do you think this kind of stuff has been going on on our side at a pretty big scale? You only have to move a few votes in every box to change the history as, of a state. As long as I've been around. Um, uh, Steve French and I worked together at the party back in, um, back in, man, let's talk my years, the eighties. Right. And, um, and one of the projects Steve and I worked on was, um, actually, I can't tell that story. I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. Those are my favorites. Right. I'll tell another one. Okay. It's equally interesting. But in Bullock County, 
there were 147% of the voting age population, not just registered, but voting. Right. Voting. Sure. Right. Well, wasn't there a Birmingham box? Just, yeah, exactly. What, 15 years ago, that uh, like 110% of the people turned out to vote? Think about that. It's a miracle. Hundred, a hundred and forty-seven. That's impossible. 147%. How could right. it be? Huh. So anyway, we worked on that project back then. So, you know, as far as I know, it goes back forever in the United States. Look, we've been cheating in this country for elections since at right. least the early 1800s. Right. And it, it, the first election that Andrew Jackson ran and lost, he lost because they outcheated him. The year that he won. He was cheating too. Yeah. They were cheating. And, and then he cheated better the next time, and that's how right. he got elected. Right. But by the time Tammany Hall came around, they made him stop using boxes. Like they used to have like literal wooden boxes, and they made him stop. In the Smithsonian, there's these big glass balls and, and with a hole in the top. And what those glass balls were was to bring some transparency to the ballot box because people were stuffing mm -hmm. things literal. in there before it started. Yeah. It's and fun. now and now we can do it digitally right. if we need to. Right. Sure. Why not? So what, what's the what's the new glass ball? Maybe that's what we ought to be trying to figure out, huh? Ooh. I'm for going back with, with the with the, the, the Swiss way where they would make you all be in the in the in the fort or whatever yeah. and you said who you were voting for and you walked out and they like put a pile of rocks here. I mean you Really wasn't, wasn't a secret by that and you got one and you were out of here. I want to go back to when you had to go in the Wizard of Oz Close the, and do the clickers. Close the that was like all the clickers kind of, was like you very fun. And that you, was very yeah. fun. Those were fun. I like that. Yeah, those were that's that's how I first voted. Yeah. Yeah. But aren't that those was like awesome. easily? I voted for I voted for Fob James. He was a Democrat then. I voted for Fob James in nineteen seventy eight. The first person I ever voted for. Oh using the using one of those machines. When yeah. were you born? Sixty. Oh. I. You wouldn't have guessed. No. Go ahead. Let's hear it. Okay, here we so, go. Go ahead. You look so young. Oh, oh you're so kind. Good. It's good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Let's see. Let's see. The internet would say that I dyed my hair. Yeah, that's yeah. right. No, and, maybe it's And I got beard. makeup and No. No, your eyes look good and your mouth's all together. Well, all <laughs> of us knew. <laughs> I mean, dang, he's not using the original versions. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Dang it. That's exactly. what I need to do. Exactly well, right. I still we didn't get to any of the 2016 yeah. stuff. We which still haven't told I want to talk about Chris Cuomo because that was hysterical. Is. Let's do it. No, I mean it's like I I can't. I'll okay. Look. Oh wow! You want to? Um, oh, I'm scared to say how long we've been. No, on, but you I get all bent no. out of shape okay, again. Okay, wow. no, no, no. You got at least two shows worth now. Wait, yeah, we really do. We <laughs> haven't talked about the Detroit, the thing you just do put like out about the ballot all. boxes and like, all the devices. Oh, we have oh, yeah, we haven't even talked about how I don't even know how Two Thousand Mules came about. We haven't even told people that's we kind of who he is yet. We can we can do. I'll that introduce really quick. it. So so, so Two Thousand Mules happened. We had done all of our work. We got to that point of dissemination, and our decision was, what are we going to do? Okay. Right. So a year ago this month. Uh, Ka Catherine and Debbie D'Souza, Dinesh's husband, or wife, was, um, they were old friends. Okay. And, and we went and met them at their house in Texas and uh, sat down and said, hey, we have a ridiculous story to tell you. And um, a month or so later, we were uh, meeting with the Salem people. And uh, a few weeks after that, they were passing around scripts and contracts and and uh, next thing I know, you know, my beard's famous, and it was like <laughs> it, it all happened like that. Okay, because I wondered if you all approached them or if they approached you or how that came together. I thought it was I saw it in the theater, um, I think the second night, and it was one of those. It reminded me of um, like I remember when I went and saw Gladiator in the mm -hmm. theater, and I this is kind of embarrassing looking back, but like I literally kicked the door going out like. You were so Karate fired up. chop, yeah, because I was so fired up when I was leaving Gladiator, <laughs> you know, and kicked the door, and like I felt like that's what everybody was doing leaving Two Thousand Mules, although mm -hmm. everybody was a little older, so nobody kicked the door, but but they wanted to, but it was right. great, yeah. and like Dennis Prager was my favorite one because I feel like for a lot of people that were on the fence, right, that was kind of that moment that was like, okay, you can't really deny. I'll tell you an interesting right. story about that. The movie didn't originally end that way. Okay. Um, what happened was. Uh, we went down and previewed the thing with Trump, the movie with Trump in um, April or something like that. Uh, just a couple of weeks before it actually <laughs> went to theaters. Did Trump not like the ending? He hated it. <gasps> he said, if you don't change it, I'm out. Stop it. He did. 
So what was the original terrible ending? There was another, you know, they had those two interviews at the end. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There was a third interview and he wouldn't have any part of it. He said, it needs to end on Prager saying, I'll fight this to my dying breath. Which was very powerful. Yeah. 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 Me and Trump. Trump. Trump was right. He was. Again. That was so good. That was really good. So. So all right, can I jump in one more quick time? Mm-hmm. If you've made this last so long. Okay. How, how frustrating is it to know what you know and have the information you have? I mean, I get frustrated just knowing what I read. I mean, I, you know, I look at some of the places I do my, my radio show. I talk about things that you have said, right. and I feel like I'm just ready to strangle somebody and say, here's here's the truth. Metaphorically. And you've got, no, I'm, I feel that really strangling somebody. <laughs> <laughs> let's, talk, let's talk. That's why I'm out of the way. Like, I don't need to, we should, we should, we should talk. assault charges. <laughs> But how frustrating is that to to know the things you know and think there's I have to find ways to tell people when you basically have to spoon feed people a little bit at a time because you give them everything they just can't take it they're like ah oh, no no I can't uh-uh. there, there's an old there's an old saying that says those who know can't sleep and that's it I mean that that's how I feel I mean I, I do I mean it's all up it's all in all of our heads because we do know and we are learning new things you mentioned mm-hmm. the Michigan thing I just found that out yesterday. And, and I know a lot more than I put in the, in the, in the post. Um, and it, and it's, and it literally is one of those things, you know, once you know, you can't sleep, we just got the Green Bay video in and it's like this ongoing, you know, when's this thing ever, you know, this train ever going to stop, you know, I need to get off and, you know, take a break, go sell t-shirts and these videos are more of these videos that show the late night dumps and all that kind of stuff that the, that the mainstream media, including some of those in Fox just keep acting like, Oh, there's nothing to see. Nothing happened. What are y'all talking about? That's just made up. We don't. And now we're seeing the videos two years later. You know, I've got video on my phone that, that, um, you know, that I I occasionally look at and, you know, just if I I need to get infuriated again, I mean, it does make you want to go kick doors. I mean, it's like, how could this be? How how could these people know this, especially law Mm. enforcement, right? Especially law enforcement. How could they know this and do nothing? And so when this next big story comes out, think about that. So if you knew that and you've known that, I've known this for 18 months. Right. If you've known what you what you guys are going to learn in, well, y'all will probably learn it in a couple of weeks. If you if you know this, what do you do? What do you do with it? Right. Can I answer How do you why? sleep? You know, how do you? Yeah. How do you if you're in a position of power to be able to do something to make it right, and you do nothing. Right. How do you, how do you live with yourself? How do they? But they're all blackmailed, or they're all compromised, or they're all being paid. Like I have to believe they don't want to be in the January six gulag. Where I don't know why they don't have. Well, well the whole January six thing is account. a is a thing all in itself, right? I mean, somebody sent me an article today that that you know that that showed them tracking the cell signals of the people from outside inside. Google came out three days after the after the thing said they had it. Mm-hmm. You know, there is no one in the geospatial analytics industry who believes that it's that it's false that the movie is false right right there's no one i know in that business who actually knows anything about it they'll make up things they'll say anything they want but the reality is it's true the the data is immutable Uh, our methods are not just proven but are are used our methods and our team are used by the federal government that's how I, that's how sure I am. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, my team is used by the federal government. So the data is immutable. Our methods and our processes are approved by the United States government, and the 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 video is sort of the silver bullet. And and if you can somehow get past all of that and think it's okay, mm-hmm. right? It's all right. Well, people will say. Well, you don't know because you can't go back and match those ballots. You don't know that they were cast for Democrats. You don't know that they were cast for Joe Biden. But it goes back to what you're talking about. It doesn't matter who they were cast for. Right. It doesn't matter if they were for Trump or Biden. Right. Right. Nobody cares. That's right. It was an illegitimate, illegal vote that taints this entire system. Exactly. So that whole argument is off the table. You can't deny that it was influenced and changed by these mules. Yeah, but period. That- the thing to fight back on that, you know, they're going to write all manner of stuff about me, you know, and, and things. I mean, the whole, the whole, 
the whole system to target and take down the, the tellers, the truth tellers in this case, um, are, is, is outrageous, right? I mean, you know, the, the history is littered with, mm-hmm. or recent history is littered with whistleblowers that have been completely destroyed. You know, on the other side, they have a whistleblower comes out, you know, against Trump and he's, you know, he's, you know, feted and, right. and, and sainted and yeah. all manner of other things. You know, we come out and say that, hey, here's two terabyte, petabytes of data. Here's a whole bunch of video. Here's a whole bunch of um, geospatial matches. Um, why don't y'all do something? And no one will take it up. And if they do, they they go get it and take it to the newspaper and say, you know, Greg's a really bad guy. And, yeah. And I, I read, I read his Wikipedia site and it really sucks. And, <laughs> <laughs> Should right. we say right now that you are not suicidal? Like I, I and I'm, I'm not kidding. Like I think about you and Ghislaine Maxwell yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> Catherine and I'm like, it's scary. I mean, but are you prepared? That. Yeah, it's a strange thing. Yeah, yeah I just don't think about me? it. Me, focus on the I was election. Just, I, I was <laughs> just, you just on, think about him. I was and focused Max on me and Catherine. And, and no, Catherine. I just, I just, well, preparing for this, I'm like, you know no, what? I know what you mean. Like, we. <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 I deeply care because like Look, people what get we're disappeared doing? all the time, right? Yeah. I mean, like like that dude, the, the another Clinton person got killed recently, no, right? No, right. t- I he hung, about he hung, Hillary too. He hung himself and then shot, shot himself in the chest with a shotgun. It's, he was while very he was dead, talented, was trying to make or maybe another way around. Right. I'm not sure which. <laughs> so he shot himself in the chest with a shotgun, then climbed in the tree right. and hung himself. You can, I actually thought through that one. I was like, you could jump and shoot in the air. Yeah, but if it's. A, <laughs> A shot. It was. A, it was. A, it was a twenty. Oh, no, it, was a a a it was a twenty-seven okay, inch you're shotgun. A magician. And like, yeah, whoop, that makes sense. Oh god. Yeah. Okay. And that's all. Blow your chest about. off. Sure. I don't know. I was trying to think of how it wasn't oh, another. It's one, a terrifying it situation. Be, it it is to be a truth it. teller it because is. in days past you could get in front of something and say, "This is what they're going to say. This is what they're going to say. I did. This right. is what they're going to say. I said. I didn't do any of it." And then you take the sting out of it. But these people are merciful. They do not have a soul, it seems. And so they don't care. They and they're literally coming don't after care. you with the Romney they're thing. They're coming after all of us, really. Eventually, all of us. That, makes well, me laugh. that whole part makes me laugh. <laughs> Listen, that movie, that Romney movie, King of Bane, at the time, it was the biggest political uh, earned media movie in the history of politics. I it had to look crazy. it up. Do you want to explain the what King, it is? King of Bane. We did this video. So I was running Newt Super PAC back in 2012. Uh, it was called Winning Our Future. And and Newt lost in Iowa, and then he lost in New Hampshire. Um, Rick Perry's consultants uh, got with a guy named Jason Meath, and they did this movie called King of... It wasn't called King of Bane. It was something... First, it was first called When Mitt Romney Came to Town or something like that. <laughs> and, and then... And then... Great title. Glad they changed it. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> and then uh, Perry got out. And, and so our job was, we were going into South Carolina and, and the way I saw my job was, um, you gotta, you gotta, if we don't win South Carolina, it's over. You were never going to get to Florida right? because Florida was just after that. We're never going to get to Florida. I think Nevada was wedged in there somewhere. But so our job was, as I saw my job was to, was to do anything that I could do to get this, get this get this story out there. And these morons took this thing like, you know, we were talking earlier about the, about the, the office with the data that wasn't really live in it. Yeah. Right. Same kind of thing. We pushed this movie out there and Jason and his team did it and we signed on to it. And, and so King of Bain was all about when, when, when Romney ran Bain Capital and, and not, not not only did it were they just merciless people, I mean they would go in and just like fire everyone. And look, I'm, you're talking to somebody who's fired a lot. Yeah, of people. you're the right, box man. Right. <laughs> but but what they would do is they would do it just to make money. I wasn't doing it to make money. I was doing it for the good of the order and How the good do you of freedom. Make money that way. That they would just resell it. They'd break the pieces. Liquidate They'd fire everybody, that. break the pieces up, resell it, and make oh millions. God. So what happened, what we learned was that Romney had had ostensibly left Bain in like 98 to go do the Winter Olympics in Utah, but he continued to get checks. He was still getting checks in 2012 from Bain. And that's what the whole, we were trying to lure them out to deny that it was true. So the movie comes out. We didn't, we didn't buy, 
I mean, I spent a little bit of money on the movie, but we didn't buy any or hardly any time. But we, we had some like $40 million in earned media in a weekend. I mean, it was stupid. It was off, it was off, oh it was off goodness. the edge. And so Newt, cause we couldn't coordinate with the campaign. So right. th they didn't really know what was coming. Right. So, I mean, I think he was as surprised as everybody else. And so Newt goes on TV and says, well, Romney people say that it's not true. And talking to me through the camera yeah. saying, look, if, if it's not true, I'm going to ask, you know, when in our future to take it down or to fix it or whatever. So, I already had a letter written. It was an open letter to Mitt Romney. It was been scrubbed. I had to look for it for like, I had to look for it for like an hour right. and couldn't find it. Finally, somebody posted it on true social for me. And right when they posted, it was on like an archive of Politico within five minutes. It was, that was cleaned off. Oh my. Somebody had taken a screenshot of it. So they posted it and it basically said, okay, so, so you, you say that I'm not telling the truth. Mm -hmm. So I've got a list of questions. Question number one, when did you really leave Bain? Question number two, when did you stop relieving, receiving money from Bain? I just went on all these things. Right. And at, at the end of it, I just said something like, best of luck. Right. Correct. Correct. I mean, the media went crazy. <laughs> I started having these dudes like following me around. It wasn't even media. It was, I, I'm not even sure. I think some of Romney's stuff. That's why yeah. I worry about you. Oh my gosh. And so people, I got off, the, I got off, an, I got off in jet, an airport, an airplane. I can't say that either. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> It was so ridiculous, but we ended up winning the Polly Awards. We won, we won two gold awards. The next one I did, you can still find this one online. It's called Mitt's Blood Money. It's another one that they did. Oh. They bought a they bought a bought a blood testing company, Bain did, and got in all kinds of trouble with Medicare. They had to pay Medicare back like hundred million dollars or something ridiculous. And so we did this little short kind of mini. The first one was like thirty minutes. This one was only like six minutes, but me and Jason did it, and. And we called it Mitt's Blood Money. And I mean, it reignited everything again. Now, shortly <laughs> after that, we lost. <laughs> or Newt, yeah. Newt got out. And right. I went, because Newt, Newt, Newt had the thing where you attacked the press. That's right. Really shot up. And then right. the Romney's people just that's made exactly like $40 right. million dollars on him or something in Florida, making mm -hmm. him to be the Satan's little That's brother. exactly what happened. And shortly <laughs> after that, Newt got out. And shortly after that, I left for Ireland to go get my eyes fixed. Because all that was happening while I was blind. Really? Oh wow! It all so you never see, see anybody coming. I was, doing, I, was doing, I was doing this trying to watch, trying to watch the video. No, that letter. I have a copy of the article. I have it on my phone. I have the Politico article. Oh wow! Oh, you got it? Yeah. Well, I'll send not it to you. not everybody has that. Well, I have it, and that letter, like you were trolling before we knew what trolls were. Mm -hmm. Like it was. Oh, 100 percent. The yeah. most amazing. It. It. I'll send it to y'all. It was really good. Um. I'd love to hear. I'd love to hear you tell that because I've told them before how we used to try to say things just to try to get somebody just to, to come get and them say, to come out. "Hey, that's wrong. That's wrong. I raised taxes way more than that." I mean, no, oh. no. I'm kidding. We, 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 did, we, we right. even did it. We even did it in the movie. You know, the biggest criticism, if you will. First, let me say this to all of your listeners, everyone who's listening. All that, two of them? No, no. There will be a lot more than two to this one. <laughs> I'm kidding. Somewhere between two we, and we've, Charlie. We've Kirk. told we've told a, a lot of people a lot of things this time. Um, and what were we talking about? <laughs> You've got, oh, drawing oh, people out. Like oh, yeah. oh, to oh, oh, drawing people out. We did it in the movie. Mm -hmm. So the big criticism about mm -hmm. it is, well, why didn't you show the same person twice? Oh, I wondered that. We did. We did in the trailer. We did in, you just can't tell because they're, it's like in the darkness and just, it was the same person. We've got it because of the pings and we knew that, but we also knew what we were doing. So we drew them out and got people. These people spent oh. a billion column inches calling us liars because we didn't have the same person twice on video. Yeah. Of course I do. Right. <laughs> I've got, right. I've got hundreds I've got of them in my, in my phone. Right. Yeah. I can't even believe. Well, okay. Well, we, I guess we need a dog just, lady. Just draw them out and get them to be stupid. Yeah. And right. then when they get done being stupid and you embarrass them, then do it again and again and again. And finally they'll quit. I mean, Let's yeah, because like right now they're saying, well, well why, why won't you tell us all the information? Why won't you give us all the information? And you keep saying, well, uh, we've, we've got it. Yeah, I'm okay. not going to telegraph my next move. Right. It's going to be fun. I mean, we're going to have a blast. We're going to we're doing this thing called pulling the ripcord where we're going to we're going to basically publish all the video and all the stuff we have. Just publish it. Put it up on some free site. and Let, let, let everybody let go let through the world it. have it. 
Like uh, WikiLeaks. Transparency. Mm. That's your glass ball. And Get the, the popcorn. So we're going to do that. We're going to do something called the pit where we're going to bring in um, a bunch of influencers, some donors, some just a whole mix of different people. And uh, we're going to turn over a whole bunch of information at the pit, including this big story, likely. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to explain it to them in a, in a big, uh, maybe 100 or so people in a room and just let the world go out and just let these people go out and explode this into the world. Um, and then uh, we've got some more stuff on the sheriff's thing. And then the Fusion Center, which we're, which we're building out for the 2022 elections, is uh, incredible. It is awesome. We're going to catch so many bad guys. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, it is going to yes. be, it is going to be Please. a blast. I want to be there for that. We're going to have, have so much This fun. is the cool warehouse that yeah. looking thing yeah. where it's like, doo -doo 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 yeah. yeah. In the movie. You know, that's just a studio, right? Yeah, I know, but I but figured there's just a like real that. one yeah. somewhere. There is. That's so exciting. It's okay, not, will you keep in, it? It's not at Mississippi State anymore. <laughs> <laughs> there, it never was. Right. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Depends on who you ask, I guess. Are you going to keep us posted? Of course. Because we're friends now. Yeah, Y'all so are awesome. You right. got to keep you. us in the loop. Um, yeah, this is this is tremendous. Oh, this will this will this will resonate all over the place. Yeah. Y'all could cut it this will. up into little pieces and probably sell it. Sell it to the left. Sell it to the left. Yeah. Adrian. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Thank you this guys. is like Appreciate I'm really kind of overwhelmed. Yeah, me too. No, I just school. really thank you. You yeah. got more of a reaction when we had Mike Lindell on. Um, that was cool. Greg Phillips. Yeah. Yeah. People are going to, I tell my husband, he's like, wait, what did you say? I'm like, you know, you know, the dude with the beard, right? Or we're not the beard or in the hat. Or now, is it a beard? Is it even a beard? It actually, it actually Do we so know weird. you? Are you really Greg Phillips with Maybe not. two G's? Maybe not. Just one. We should look G2. out at the beach in about a year. <laughs> look for the t-shirt. T-shirt, some beer and free cigars for my friends. Hey, and we'll see you there. on a serious note, um, I think like I was thinking like how many lives you may save. Like this is kind of cool mm -hmm. with your medical information keep us posted on that as well like what's coming in mississippi um everybody look into dog dewormer i'm not kidding yeah. because i've always heard that ivermectin cured cancer as well and that's yeah, kind of that same search family on, search on me if you're if you're on true social search search on me and finn bendazol okay. and there's i did one little post here a few weeks ago i was mm -hmm. stuck in chicago in an airport and did anything to do so i just decided i'm just gonna post this man it lit y'all it lit a just a, a a fire that's still going about finbendazole and just all the comments of people saying what they did what or can what I they do used. and yeah. people I'm mm -hmm. sick and then a couple wow. of, a couple of really just top notch researchers jumped in people that really know this stuff and jump, and we're offering them all sorts of suggestions it's still I was reading it before I came in here today wow. but this this one thread has been going on for for weeks and weeks and weeks and, and again it think about that so so. We are also distrustful of our government that we're getting our medical mm -hmm. advice from True Social. Yep. I mean, that's where we it's are. Great, yeah. It's great that's advice. I mean, the, what I've been reading, these guys are saying. Right. You know, people ask me though. I'm like, dude, I just I just followed what the dogs do. Right. <laughs> right. What the box said. <laughs> but Greg yeah. Phillips, saving lives and saving America. It's pretty impressive. All at the same time. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Appreciate thank it. Thank you so yeah. much. Who wants yeah. to close us out? You got it. You no, this it is out. what you always do. I and I don't giggling. do it right. Yeah, because you. No, I'm going to be professional. Hey, this has been um, Alabama Unfiltered with Greg Phillips. We appreciate you watching. Don't forget to check out our podcast at all the usual usual places: Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Check out 1819 News. Sign up for their daily newsletter daily newsletter. newsletter and if you want to sign up for the daily detail you can do that too. there is a daily detail there is there wasn't, there, wasn't there a controversy about calling it the wrong thing yes at one time? because you wanted the daily detail and now to we be have the one. daily newsletter but we have a daily yeah. detail right. and you want to sign up for the newsletter because it's going to come to your inbox first thing in the morning that's who wants what, to miss that that's what you want no to do. one you Absolutely. don't want to miss that greg come back and visit us sometimes thanks, thanks for being appreciate here appreciate it absolutely thanks guys see y'all